Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm Jillian, I'm a full-time watercolour artist and today I'm getting ready to spend some time with my community brush movement where we have a monthly art social and we paint the flower of the month. This month we were painting pansy flowers. As I'm getting ready to set up my whole studio, I really really appreciate the time that I get with my community especially since it forces me to set aside some time to just play and be around like-minded people who love and enjoy painting. Allow me to take you through a quick walkthrough of how I painted these pansies. Painting the pansies needs a lot of wet in wet work so you're gonna have to have a lot of good water control as you are painting these. The pansy flowers have such beautiful shapes. I've got my reference photo here and I'm going to be using a flat brush from Silver Black Velvet as well as a cat's tongue brush from Silver Black Velvet as well. These brushes hold a lot of water and they are great for using wet washes because we're going to be doing quite a fair bit of wet in wet. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down how I work through the pansy flower. We're going to be using watercolour inks which is one of my favourite ways to paint. I am going to be starting with the outside shape of the flower going one petal at a time using a very light wash of paint to begin with following which I would charge and add in more pigment depending on where I see shadows I'm also adding in a variation of purples and using brush strokes to pull it out so that you get some of those lines Using the back of your brush is also a helpful way to get those veins and lines. Working on the next petal, I'm going on the top part and this time adding a little bit of yellow as I go along. I'm also mindful that purple and yellow are complementary colours so there's a chance that it muddies up. So you really want to be sure that those colours don't coincide too much while your paper is still wet. As you're working on each petal, be mindful of using different color values so you've got darker color values especially on petals that are behind and the ones that are in the front tend to be a little lighter because the light is shining on it. I like to use the back of my brush to pull out those colors while it's still wet because I get those really nice veins. Then I'm starting to work on the center slowly pulling out a little bit of yellow and then I'm slowly pulling it out with some water. Take your time through this process and I know it's really hard for you to take your time considering how quick I'm working on this painting. Now the beauty of using wet in wet is that it lets the paint have nice bleeds and blends and you get some really really beautiful soft marks. The petal I started with has started to dry and I really want to add some of those darker purples. So I dropped in water and then I've added in more purple colour and this is going to work as some of those nice soft bleeds that you see in the reference. I pull my brush out so you get some of those lines and this is also going to help me to kind of showcase the veins in this pansy. When you go back in wet in wet again, you have to make sure that that very part is fully dry before you go in again because you don't want to overwork your painting especially when it's still damp. One of the things I noticed about working with a macro flower like this is that you tend to get stuck on the details and that's because the details are so much more prominent and you can see all the veins and all of those colours. So as a result, I want you to decide for yourself how much detail you want to add in your pansy. You don't have to go as 
detail as this. However, because I was doing this as a demonstration for my community, I felt like the more detailed I went, it also showcased to the community members what are some of the possibilities if you want to go deeper with creating more depth in your artwork. Watercolor tends to dry a shade lighter, so I went back in and added in a darker layer of yellow to make sure that it doesn't look as washed out. And you can do that as well, especially when that part is already fully dry. I want to do the same for that back petal and I've already created that wet wash and then I'm going in this time with a more pink color instead of purple because I find that it looks a lot brighter. Then I'm going towards the edges to try and charge in so I get a lot more depth where you can see the contrast between the front petal and the back petal. I'm slowly working through this flower in different sections where I'm going one petal at a time noticing where it has started to dry and where I can utilize it while it's still wet. Now once it starts to dry, I know that I can go in and add another layer. I'm adding in some of that purple there on top of the yellow and I'm also being really mindful because one of the tricky parts that I felt as I was doing this was my fear of the colors muddying where the yellow underneath starts to mix with the purple and it results in a very muddy color. So this is something that you have to stay clear of. Instead of using purple, you can choose to use another color. However, depending on what color you choose to layer on top, you have to realize that because watercolor is transparent, there's that possibility of the two colors interacting on each other as you are glazing over. Right in the middle here, I noticed that there's a lot stronger color and specifically I see that there's some orange. So this is where I have added in some watercolor inks that are of high saturation. I also noticed that as it started to dry, it started to lighten in color value. So I added in gouache instead. Now take a look at your reference photo and often refer to where it is at and where else you want to improve on or add more detail. At this stage, I can actually call it done. However, I started to fiddle a bit more with it um, and add a bit more color. I felt like it looked a bit washed out, especially where the pinks were. So I just started to charge and add a little bit more color, especially towards the edges and started to pull it out a little more. This is where when you compare between the left side which I'm currently working on and the right side you can see quite a stark difference because the left side looks a lot more vibrant and then I have to repeat the same process on the right side so that it doesn't look as washed out.
as you are watching me do more and more layers to create darker color values around this flower i thought it's a great opportunity for us to talk about overworking the thing about working wet in wet and in layers like this is that it increases the chances of overworking where you keep brushing over the same area or you are reactivating paint from underneath if your paint is non-staining. This is where I want to encourage you to ensure a couple of things when working in layers. Number one, make sure that you have all the layers dry fully before you move on to the next one over and on top. The next thing you want to do is work in as minimal brush strokes as possible. You don't want to go over the same area over and over again, but rather use broad, big strokes and choose the right brush for the job as you are creating your painting. When you have already charged in paint, make sure that you allow that paint to move and blend and do the work for you before you continue to go over the area over and over again. These are ways in which you can help to keep overworking at bay and I really hope that it helps you as you are painting this beautiful pansy flower. I'm just adding in the final bit which is in the center where I noticed that the purple is a lot more prominent and you can see that it is not as blended so I decided to really add in a couple of darker purple colors in the center and as I'm working through the layers I also realized that this allows me to slowly increase my color value as I go along. There's a lot more control when I work in layers and I encourage you to try working in more than one layer. However, while working in layers, you have to remember to let each layer rest and dry before you move on to the next one. We are now coming to the end of this video. I had so much fun putting this together and also as a sneak peek for you as to what it's like to have an art social session with Brush Movement. If you're curious about this community I host, you can read more about it in the description below. One of the things that really helps me as a mentor and educator when I'm painting live is I notice how a lot of the things that happen might not go my way and this also shows members how I troubleshoot or even embrace the struggles as I push through the ugly beginning. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey. I really enjoyed this painting session and I cannot wait for us to see each other again in the next video.